Number 25. A baseball pitcher throws the ball in a motion where there is rotation of the forearm about the elbow joint as well as other movements. If the linear velocity of the ball relative to the elbow joint is 20 meters per second at a distance of 0.48 meters from the joint and the moment of inertia uh, of the forearm is 0.5 kilogram meter squared, what is the rotational kinetic energy of the forearm? So here's our little picture. Here's the forearm right here. It's going to be rotating about the elbow joint, which is right uh, at that particular dot. It's going to have some angular velocity to it. We don't know what it is, um, but they do tell us that the basically uh, linear velocity or the tangential velocity uh, relative to the elbow joint is going to be 20 meters per second. And we are then tasked, and we, they also told us nicely that the moment of inertia is 0.5. We need to find the rotational kinetic energy. All right. So first thing is, I'll start with the question. What is rotational kinetic energy? Well, it's equal to one half times the moment of inertia times the angular velocity squared. So I, I start with my question. I'm looking for a formula, okay? So kinetic energy of rotation is one half multiplied by the moment of inertia multiplied by the angular velocity squared. Now they told us the moment of inertia, so that's good, right? We just plug that in. But the key critical question is then, well, what is this angular velocity? They didn't tell that to us. They told us a linear velocity. So now my thought process changes, right? My thought process is now, how do I connect uh, angular velocity to linear velocity? And that you have to, I don't know if you'll be given this on the test, maybe, I'm not sure, uh, but you might have to memorize it. I mean, you should be doing, by the way, enough practice where um, these formulas are kind of just memorized, you know, not on purpose, but from doing a bunch of problems you see in the formula so many times. That uh, the, the relationship is this, that the, I'll write it on the top left, that the tangential velocity is equal to the radius of rotation multiplied by the angular velocity. And therefore, if I had to solve this thing for angular velocity, I then have a nice equation that will relate the tangential velocity to this angular velocity, right? So what I can do here is I can substitute this piece on in for my omega, okay? And my new formula now becomes the kinetic energy of rotation will equal one half times the moment of inertia multiplied by the tangential velocity divided by the radius. That whole thing squared. And lo and behold now we have all the variables we need. They told us the linear or tangential velocity, that's 20. We know the radius of rotation from the axis of rotation to where the mass is actually, well the mass is spread out, but uh, we do know the radius of the arc, uh, so that's 0.48. And then we, they told us the moment of inertia, so. Just calculate now. So KER is equal to 1 half times 0 0.5 times then 20 over 0 0.48 squared. And what do we get? So we get 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times then parenthesis 20 divided by 0.48 and square that. So 434, we'll do three sig figs, all right? So 434 and that is uh, joules, okay? Sometimes guys, just so you know, when I do my calculations here, I'm not putting in all the decimals because 0.5 in terms of calculating is the same as 0 0.500. I'm just looking then back to what's given. That's how I'm determining my significant figures. All right, okie dokie, and that's it, Nice, right? Nice, easy problem, piece of cake. Guys, please subscribe, help us out, hit that thumbs up button, and I'll help you on the next question. All right, take care.